That would be the opening movement to Franz Josef Haydn's Violin Concerto in A and Midori Zeiler, our soloist, along with Concerto Kun. It's 9.32 this Monday morning. Good day, GTA. You are listening to the new Classical FM. I'm Mike Duncan here with Gene Stilwell. The Canadian Opera Company is premiering a new co-production of Handel's Ariodante at the Four Seasons Centre for the Performing Arts. Now, this Baroque opera runs for seven performances beginning October 16th. And with us to talk about it is Canadian soprano Jane Archibald, who makes her role debut as Ginevra, Ariodante's wronged fiancé. Mm. Good morning, Jane. Good morning. Now, um, you, what you you last when you were last here in two thousand twelve, you sang Semele and uh, by Handel, and uh, I just wondered what are what are some of the similarities in singing the role of Semele and that of Ginevra? I mean, not in terms of character, but in terms of music. Well, I think Handel um, always presents a sort of unique opportunity in that. Um, all the arias, all the um, op- Handel operas are filled with these beautiful da capo arias, which give you this kind of unique, um, you know, forum for self-expression because everyone gets to go back and repeat the A section and do their own ornamentation and show off, mm. you know, where where your particular voice wants to go. What and because the because a Handel orchestra is so light um and sort of airy even in the most dramatic sort of moments you have this freedom to maybe go for me at least as a coloratura soprano to go different places in your voice where you can't go over a full orchestra to really like access your chest voice Mm or or a really high 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 pianissimo high note and there's it's you really get to explore the full sort of palette of colors i think in your voice Mm -hmm. now speaking of de capo and repeating the repeating the aria again um to what degree do you get to interpolate um, I have always had, I mean, it w- really depends, of course, on, on um, the negotiations with the rest of the musical team, but I sure. have always found that I've been given a lot of freedom. Um, sometimes it's coming more from me. Sometimes it's a very collaborative process with the um, conductor. Um, in this case, because I have a, such a huge season, um, and I've worked <laughs> with Johannes Debus before, and I knew that he would be, you know, he's quite accommodating, I thought, I'm going to get my ornamentation, like, all lined up well in advance, because mm. I don't, sometimes it's really nice um, if you've, if you've got lots of time to rehearse to like let it kind of develop quite organically during the course of the rehearsal process but for me in this case because it was a role debut I really wanted to sort of have at least the major ideas lined up how, and, w- yeah. when you say in advance I mean how how far in advance oh I have to admit to like my, a year <laughs> like a year uh, you know in advance? there are people like that my husband yeah. <laughs> my husband is like that he's fantastic he's working on his stuff like the second he gets the contract right, he's right. learning it because that's his way I've uh-huh. always been a bit of a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl so like um it. yeah no i mean i was still cramming some of the ornaments in july and august but oh, well, but you know well ahead of the yeah game. it sort of depends like if i've got free time if i know i've got you know six weeks off then i can afford to leave it otherwise right. i'm kind of like building it slowly in right okay now ginevra is the center of all the action in ario dante so, tell us about her who is she so Ginevra is in, in, in this production, but I think it'd be fair to say in any in any sort of interpretation of the story, a, a young, youthful, innocent character who has fallen in love, um, as is the beginning of many an operatic story. And um, in in this production, she's quite maybe a little bit kooky. You know, she's she's roaming the beaches and gathering her seashells and her treasures, and she's fallen in love with Ariadante, who's maybe also a little bit you know interesting. And the two of them are kind of kindred spirits, and unfortunately. Um, he's, you know, there's a there's a baddie, you know, a real obvious, clear bad guy who comes in and kind of stirs the pot and uh, uh, convinces Ario Dante that Ginevra has been unfaithful, which is not, in fact, the case. There's, you know, story um, a story of like changing costumes with another character and it's dark and whatever. And so most of the action, most of the drama happens once this has sort of been set into motion and it eventually um, becomes clear that she hasn't done that. But there's a lot of angst and hand wringing and sorrow oh. while oh. we get that sorted out. Well, speaking of the staging and the costume changing and whatnot, I understand this staging is it requires a lot of, uh, what is it, um, illusion of space, working with an illusion of space. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's been, we have had to be very careful from day one um, because it's a very open, it's a fantastic set for singing. I mean, I'm just so thankful. Because it's, there's space. It's yeah? it, There's space and it's a box. Yeah. It's a box uh-huh. with a ceiling. Like the Four Seasons is already a dream to sing yes. in and then you put this set on the stage and it's just, I mean, it's heaven. Um, but yeah, there it's, it's three separate rooms, but in order to sort of have this feeling of space and in order, I think in some ways to heighten the 
all of the deception that's going on, we have imaginary walls, Mm -hmm. which, um, so a lot of that falls on us. We have these sort of doors that open, but they're not really doors. They're just handles on a frame. And we have to be very careful then not to bring our elbow, like not to bring our elbow (laughs) through the wall that doesn't exist. Um, So that has been a, you know, an acting challenge for all of us. Because when you're busy thinking about whatever else and and someone says, well, your elbow just went through the door, let's take (laughs) it again. And you're going, ah, but, but it's, it's really cool. And it kind of keeps us on our toes. I bet. So it's, it's a really interesting concept. And I think it really, really works. Mm. Great. And, um, have you worked with um, Richard before? Richard Jones is the director. I have not. No, I haven't worked with him before, but, um, I mean, he's well known for just doing some really incredible productions and and it's it's an exciting production mm-hmm. i think we're lucky to have it here well that's great but I, I i don't know how you do that stuff because i know that that whenever i worked on stage and i had to do anything that had anything to do with mime mm. it was particularly challenging because that's not my forte no it's not at all it's not you our know, training we never do that well it's not so much mime because there is an actual door handle it's right it's hard to describe you'll see it i mean or you can you know anyone interested can just youtube it from the, the x production or the amsterdam this this is a co-production right um and it has a little so we have at least the door handle and it's just you just have to kind of see it and then you're not miming you have to see it in your okay. head there is a door here and then you naturally don't put your elbow through it but you right. have to get used to taking that extra step of, I need to see this door, I need right. to see this wall that's not right. there. Um, now, uh, Alison Coot plays the title role, and uh, you've worked with her before? I have, multiple times, yes, but not not in Handel, I don't think. We've done a lot of Strauss together. Oh. Um, uh, what Strauss, for instance? Um, Ar- Ariadne. Ariadne. We've done that. Mm-hmm. We've done multiple productions of Ariadne here, of course, my COC debut, and, and in Europe and a couple of places. Well, Jane, I just I, I want to thank you so much for coming in. Mm-hmm. I could talk to you for ages. <laughs> it's just, you've got such a, an exciting and a wonderful career. And thank you. Congratulations for it all. Thanks for having me. You're, well, thanks for coming in. <laughs> We've been speaking with soprano Jane Archibald about the Canadian Opera Company's production of Handel's Ariadante. It opens October 16th at the Four Seasons Centre for the Performing Arts. For tickets, go to coc.ca or call 416-363-8231.